Today I'm going to take you back in time to 1888, the place Whitechapel, which was at the time a very impoverished district in London's East End, where violent crime was not uncommon and the smell of sewage lay thick in the air from human and horse waste left out on the streets, and the sound of hooves and the dirty cobbled floors was almost deafening. Whilst London's West End was going through big changes with the introduction of the grand music halls, hotels and restaurants, the East End of London was simply forgotten about. The people of Whitechapel were poor, and some found it hard to make ends meet, and would do whatever was needed to provide a roof over the head and food in their bellies, whether this was acts of violence, robbery or prostitution. The East End of London was extremely overpopulated, and this included Whitechapel, which was overcrowded and dirty, and when the sun went down, it became even worse. If the street that you walked down was not dimly illuminated by a single lantern, then it would be simply pitch black. You probably couldn't even see your outstretched hand in front of your face. The people who were lucky enough to find a job would work gruelling hours and for very little money, and many could be found turning to booze in the dark slums of the area. Many families would have to share a very small living space, and I don't mean one family, I actually mean a few families in the same room. And believe it or not, this was not the worst of it. There were other places in Whitechapel that would provide a bed for the nights for a price of a penny. 80 beds or so could fit inside this establishment, but if you didn't have enough money, you could still pay a tuppence and simply sleep standing up, with the aid of a single rope that held you up, which was tied from one end of the room to the other. These homes that provided so many with a place to sleep were infested with rats, insects and disease, but it was the best many could find for such a little price, and it was a roof over their heads for the night. Although work for men was hard to come by, work for women was nearly impossible, and many had no option but to turn to prostitution. Prostitution was a popular profession for many women of Whitechapel, and it's safe to say that this profession was not exactly safe, and the women needed to have their wits about them. Many of the women would offer their services for a very small amount of money, or simply for food. But for many, alcohol was the answer to drown out their sorrows. For many women, this lifestyle took its toll, and many fell ill to various illnesses, disease, or acts of violence from their customers. But no one really cared all that much. After all, prostitutes were not really held in high regard, and no one really took notice. But all that was about to change with the murder of Emma Elizabeth Smith and the creation of the Whitechapel Murders police file. A file which consisted of 11 unsolved murders which happened in or around the Whitechapel area, five of which many believe were the handiwork of a certain serial killer. This serial killer was possibly the first to attract worldwide media attention, and even though the serial killer was never caught, he was still given a name, and he went down in history as one of the world's most famous serial killers there has ever been. He has also appeared in many works of fiction and become quite a popular, morbid pop culture character. Today on Bizarre Tales, I'm going to take you back in time to 1888, to a time when Evil Incarnate was unleashed on Whitechapel, and it had a name. Jack the Ripper. Not a lot was known about Emma, apart from that she was well spoken and mysterious about her past. But what is known is that she possibly had a more luxurious life in her past before she had to turn to prostitution. Emma was 45 years of age and had hinted to close friends that she was a widow and had been married 10 years previous but never really went into much detail. What is known about Emma is that she had been beaten and treated badly by her clients in the past and would often return home with black eyes and at one point was even thrown through a window. It was also known that Emma liked to drink and when she did, she would get very drunk and she would act like a mad woman. Apparently, she would act very over rambunctious. At the time of her murder, she was staying at a lodging house at 18 George Street, now renamed Lowellsworth Street, in the East End of London. Although this is the first murder case in the Whitechapel file, it isn't believed to be at the hands of Jack the Ripper. But at the time it was believed to be so, possibly down to the newspapers getting the information wrong. At 12.15am, Margaret Hayes, another lodger at 18 George Street, had seen Emma talking to a man in dark clothing. Margaret later revealed that on that same night, she herself was actually punched in the face after she was robbed by two men who stopped to ask at the time before they attacked, and just a week before she was actually hospitalised after another brutal attack. 
But according to Margaret, the man she saw speaking to Emma did not fit the profile of either of her attackers. In the early hours of Tuesday morning on the 3rd of April, around 1.30am in 1888, Emma was viciously attacked by a gang of two or three men on the junction of Osborne Street and Brick Lane in Whitechapel. According to Emma, the men approached her and with intention of avoiding them, she crossed the street. But unfortunately, they followed and the assault took place. Although very badly beaten, she did manage to make her way back to the lodging house at around 3am and told the deputy keeper and Miss Murray Russell that she was set upon by two or three men, one of which was a teenager. Although Emma was adamant that she did not want to go to hospital, Murray Russell could see that she was in a bad way and insisted that they go. She was taken to London Hospital but unfortunately her injuries were too severe and she fell into a coma and died the next day. The attack had been very vicious. She had been beaten around the face and her ear had a very nasty cut. There was injuries to the lower part of her body and as well as being brutally beaten, the attackers had also inserted a blunt object into her vagina with such force that it ruptured the peritoneum, which is the lining of the abdominal cavity and her internal organs had been ruptured. Unfortunately, Emma didn't give any detailed descriptions of who the attackers could have been. This was probably due to how hurt she was or out of fear of retribution. And although the police did try and investigate any possible leads, in the end, the murder case went unsolved. It is more likely that Murray's attackers were simply street gangs who would extort money from prostitutes in those days. And in the end, the murder case went unsolved. They never captured who killed Murray Elizabeth Smith, the first of the Whitechapel murders. Although Murray Elizabeth Smith almost certainly was not murdered by Jack the Ripper, I thought it was necessary to include in the episode as it is the first case entered into the Whitechapel murders file, but also I think it tells us just how violent and dangerous the area of Whitechapel was back in 1888. The Whitechapel murders file had a total of 11 murders which were added over 3 years. Although it is only 5 of these killings that are believed to be the handiwork of Jack the Ripper, and these 5 have become known as the canonical 5 killings which all took place over a five week span, which is now known as the Autumn of Terror. 